with OTA starting this week, there was an article in Athletic that I thought was really interesting. Uh, it's by Jeff Zarebic, who does great work for the Athletic. And I'm just going to read the article and kind of give you my thoughts on each situation in the article. Let's get started. So the article was named uh, The Ravens will start OTAs this week Which today is that Today is the day uh, With multiple unresolved questions Picture of um, Who is this Is that uh, Kohler Maybe No that's not Kohler Anyway the Ravens take the field Tuesday, which is today, to start the first of three weeks of organized team activities with far more unresolved questions than they are probably used to at this time of year. Training camp is still two months away, and manager Eric DaCosta and his predecessor, Ozzie Newsom, have typically done some late season, some late off-season shopping. This year, further roster additions feel like a necessity. The state of Baltimore's depth chart at wide receiver, edge rusher, and cornerback suggests that help should be on the way in the form of productive veterans. So there's that. Then there's the questions about the guys who are already on the contract with the Rams. I'm sorry, with the Ravens. Lamar Jackson's contract status will continue to hover over the team until it's addressed. Veteran safety Chuck Clark is a candidate to be traded after the Ravens signed Marcus Williams and used a first round pick on Notre Dame's Kyle Hamilton. The Ravens remained in waiting, I'm sorry, in waiting C mode with a number of players coming off major injuries. And that's the kicker. There likely won't be too many defensive answers delivered during the OTAs, but there will be plenty of storylines regardless. Question number one, will Jackson participate? Jackson has chosen to stay away from the team's off-season workout program, and the Ravens maintain that they are fine with it. They've expressed enthusiasm about the work Jackson has done this off-season in training with Adam Dudo, a quarterback's mechanics expert, and several of his receivers. The Ravens have yet to publicly express concern that Jackson, who is set to play under his fifth-year option on his rookie deal, hold out. Jackson isn't required to show up to OTAs either. They are voluntary. However, most quarterbacks traditionally participate, viewing the workout as valuable reps with their receivers. Jackson has certainly taken part in the OTAs and previous off-seasons. If he opts not to this year, it will only bring more attention to his contract status. The Ravens will likely downplay his absence, but it goes without saying that they'd much rather have Jackson on the field, throwing to his young receivers, and accepting snaps from his rookie center. Now, will Lamar show up? Don't know. I would like for him to, but he's about to do something that's unprecedented. He's already won the MVP. He's one of, you know, and just to be, to keep down confusion, he's one of the top 10 quarterbacks in the league, I think. And he's about to play on his fifth year deal, his rookie deal without a big deal. That's unheard of for a guy that has done the things he's done this early in his career. He's betting on himself. He's betting on himself, which I really hope, you know, it pans out. I really do. Because I want him to be in Baltimore for his entire career. I think he's a phenomenal talent. I think he is different, man. I just think he's different. And I want him to have early success before his uh, image is tarnished, so to speak. And not it won't be tarnished by me no matter what he decides to do, whether he play for the Ravens or play for somebody else. His image won't be tar tarnished by me. I think he's a great player. But um, I think he should show up because he got a lot of guys that, besides Bateman, that he needs to mesh with, or it be Prochet, Duvernay, uh, likely Kohler, um, the UDFAs who probably at this point we're probably going to count on because we haven't signed anybody. So I would hope he show up and get some work in with those guys. But if he don't, what can we say? Next question. Who else may not attend? While the quarterback's whereabouts during OTA is a story, OTAs is a story in itself, and that goes for every NFL city. The Ravens don't traditionally spend a whole lot of time obsessing over who doesn't show up. Ravens coach John Harbaugh likes to say the organization focuses on the players who are on the field. The Ravens have never been a team that gets anywhere close to perfect attendance at OTAs. Many of their veterans have chosen to stay home in the past, and that trend will probably continue this week. The Ravens would much rather have guys like Ben Cleveland, 
Tyree Phillips getting guard reps over Kevin Zyla at this time of year, or Daniel Falele playing right tackle over Morgan Moses or Travis Jones seeing more time than Calais Campbell. And that's smart. To me, that's really smart. Get your young guys, your unproven guys in there. Let them get the reps. Let them get the, the good coaching. Let them get all of the coaching. I'm going to put it in a, in a scenario like this. So, and since I'm a teacher, I'm going to do it like this. You, you, you teach at a big private, big public school. And whereas most, the teachers can't really give you the one-on-one you need. Where if you go to OTAs and you have a Zeitler not there, Moses not there, Calais Campbell not there, then you go to like a private school setting with like a Ben Cleveland, Daniel Falele, Travis Jones, where they can get a lot more one-on-one with the coach or, and you know, with the, what you call them, like the teacher. They can get more one-on-one with that, get more out of it, whether than, rather than just sitting back getting those mental reps while – uh, Zeitler, Moses, or Campbell gets in there and they just watch it. I'm sorry about that. Get on. So that's really an interesting take on it and I like it. Next question. Will any of the Ravens coming off injuries or surgeries be far enough along to, in their recoveries to participate? This seems unlikely, only because it's still pretty early in the Rambo process to training camp. Why would the Ravens force the issue at this time of year? It certainly feels much too early to see guys like J.K. Dobbins Gus Edwards, Ronnie Stanley, Marcus Peters, Tyus Bowser, Derek Wolf, Justice Hill, Adolfi Owe, and David Ojabu participating. That's an all-star team right there. Guys coming back, you know, Dobbins, Gus, Ronnie, Peters, Bowser, Wolf, uh, Owe. You know, not I'm not saying Justice Hill and Ojabu are not all-stars, but, you know, I'm just saying that's a pretty good lineup that's hurt. And that's, that's – and that – those guys coming back healthy is the reason for so much optimism in in the flock. And um, I really would like to see all of them get 100% or close to it before they even push them on the field. Next question. There are obvious and notif- noticeable changes on how the Ravens practice. As the last year's injury-marred campaign, Harbaugh met at length with his strength and conditioning staff to begin the process of making changes in how the team trains and practices in 2022. Harbaugh foreshadowed some of those changes in his comments at the owners, the league owners meeting in March and specifically mentioned approaching OTAs different. He didn't elaborate on how they'll be different, but given how much time and resources the Ravens have spent in studying injuries this offseason, you can probably expect the pace and intensity of OTAs to be toned down a bit from last year's past and more attention on situation and skill work. So what that means is it's probably going to be a lot of walking around. Probably gonna be a lot of walking around, a lot of walkthroughs, a lot of um, a lot more cones and dummies and trash cans on the field, you know, rather than some action, so to speak. Probably less one on ones, probably less less um, anything that you know would would warrant contact. And I know you can't you can't stop those. Non-contact injuries, like a guy cutting on a route, but they're probably going to dumb it down as far as they can without sacrificing the integrity of the game, and which makes sense because you had entirely too many injuries last year. All right, which rookies will stand out? Which is what OTA is about. Who can pick it up? The fa- who can pick it up the fastest, and who's going to participate? At, st- at this stage, the coaching staff just wants to make sure the rookies are lining up right and responding well to the pace and format of practices. Harrell always offers the reminder at this point of the offseason that rookies still need to learn how to practice. The Ravens' 28-member rookie class has been in the building for a few weeks now, so they should be more than comfortable and settled than they were at the team's rookie minicamp. Hamilton and center Tyler Linderbaum, the team's pair of first-rounders, are especially plug-and-play guys. There is an exception that they'll hit the ground running and establish themselves early. The OTAs could be pretty important for fourth rounders Jalen Omar Davis and Damarian Williams. Cornerback doesn't present itself as such a significant need if the day two, I'm sorry, the two day three rookies are ready to contribute from the jump. Now those two rookies, the two cornerbacks, night and day in my eyes. Uh, Jalen Omar Davis probably could have been a higher pick if it not been for injuries. Damarian Williams was probably picked where he should be. So I think Armour Davis could actually participate earlier 
and Demario Williams is just a special teams guy to start off with. Even though they both were picked at you know the same round, I think Armand Davis was picked that low because of his injury situation, and Demario Williams was kind of picked there because that's where his talent fits. Um, and you know, you're looking at those two guys right now. If they don't permanently move um, Stevens to corner, that's cornerback three and four right there. You know, we got some other guys on the team, but you know. But they potentially be, could be cornerback three or four. You know, we got other guys on the team, but we don't want to talk about them. All right. How will the re young receivers look? Which is, you know, what dominates the Ravens' flock receivers. Uh, the Ravens will sign or acquire a veteran receiver at some point before training camp. Um, they haven't done it yet, despite trading Marquise Brown during the draft. Did I read that right? They haven't done it yet, despite trading Marquise Brown during the draft. Has to at least be interpreted as a vote of confidence to the young pass catchers they've already ha they already have on their roster. The Ravens certainly aren't acting like a team that's desperate at the position. The Ravens themselves are not, but the fan base is going nuts. Then it's and it is what it is. The Ravens themselves are not acting like it's a problem. At least they're not showing it. But the fan base is going nuts. It's daily wide receiver chaos in the Ravens flop. Um, the OTAs, along with the mandatory minicamp in mid-June, seemingly take an added importance for the likes of Devin DuVernay, James Prochet, and Tylen Wallace. I agree with that 100%. Those guys got to step their game up and show that, you know, hey, we can, we can handle this. Starting receiver roles won't be decided in May and June, but strong impressions could go a long way. Beyond Rashard Bateman, whose role is secure, there are jobs and snaps to be earned, and that's just as relevant for the team's six undrafted rookie free agent receivers as it is for guys like Prochet and Wallace. Uh, the six undrafted rookie free agents. Um, let's see if I can name them. Williams from Oregon. Pope from Mississippi State. Um, I can't think of his name. The 6'4 kid from, um, is it not Albany, Fort Valley. Those are the only three I can remember. Put the other three in the comment section. I can't remember the other three guys. Let's go on to the next question. And before we even go, I think Pope going to make the team and maybe even start. Uh, will any of the returning Ravens who figure to be on the bubble come July show marked improvement? It's inevitable when you bring in 28 rookies, sign five veterans from other organizations, and re-sign four of your own. Some returning Ravens simply won't have spots come early September. There's plenty of time before position competitions heat up, before a number of returning players is not too early to start stating their cases. Tight end, Josh Oliver, out. Offensive lineman, Tristan Cologne, back up to Lennon Ben Powers, back up to Cleveland. Juwan James, back up to Moses. Or, or, um, Falele. Inside linebacker, Malik Harrison. Now, that's interesting. This is a dude that I'm high on. He, I feel like he should be at a point where he takes over the mic position. And allows you know Queen to stay with his off-ball duties, but he just keep allowing Josh Bynes to stay and and keep being re-signed, and he'll mess around and be at the end of his rookie deal before it pop off. And I, I don't think they were happy with, I don't think they were ecstatic about his play, but the fact that he was in a situation that led to him getting hurt or shot, you know, we all know what happened. Um, I you know. They didn't like the fact that he put himself in that situation. Now, he can't control somebody, whatever somebody was doing with a pistol or whatever. But the fact that, that he was in that situation, I think. This ain't nothing I heard. It's just my, my I think this. That they weren't happy with his play and then to go along and put himself in that situation. Um, I just don't think they liked it. Uh, outside linebacker Jalen Ferguson on the way out. And Dalen Hayes, who I like. Hopefully, he's coming back. Well, hopefully when he comes back off his injury, he'll be 100% and can show what he did. I really like this college tape. Uh, defensive back are Darius Washington, versatile kid. He's one of the guys that can jump down and play some play some nickel maybe. Maybe even take over for, um, uh, shoot, who's the nickel, the nickel corner that we let go? His name escapes me that fast. He was always hurt. Tavon Young. Maybe he can drop down and take some of that Tavon Young um, 
stuff, or maybe even one of those other corners be outside and Marlon just be the, the, the designated nickel guy, but we'll see. Uh, are among other players who come in mind when talking about guys who could find themselves on the proverbial bubble in a couple of months. They may attack the OTAs with a bit more urgency than others. They should. Everybody in that list should because it's – it's go time for some of them, but the only ones I think that'll come out of that come out of this situation of positive light are Dalen Hayes, or Darius Washington. I think Cologne will solidify that backup center spot. Uh, ben Powers, he gonna be in for a fight. Can be in for a fight. Uh, Juwan James gonna be in for a fight, especially if he's healthy. You know, him him being healthy will will help his chances out. But you know, this is the article from um, Jeff Zarebic that OTA started today, and I just wanted to kind of give you guys an insight on it and talk about it and, um, you know, just keep the flock heads up on it. Appreciate you guys. See you Wednesday with another video, like with film in it, and um, like, comment, subscribe, man. See y'all Wednesday. Peace.